Example 2, body temperatures using StatCrunch. Assume that the population of human body temperatures has a mean of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, as is commonly believed. Also assume that the population standard deviation is 0 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit based on data set 5 body temperatures in Appendix B. A sample of size N, which is equal to 106 subjects, was randomly selected and the mean body temperatures 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit was obtained. If the mean body temperature is really 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, find the probability of getting a sample mean of 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit or lower for a sample of size 106. Based on the result, is 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit significantly low? And what do these results suggest about the common belief that the mean body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit? Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to draw our bell curve. So let's draw our bell curve. And then we're going to label everything that we need to label from our question. Okay, so what's given is the mean. And so the mean here is 98 0.6. So if the mean body temperature is really 98.6, then we're going to say that the mean here of the sample means is 98.6. Okay, and what we're looking for is find the probability of getting a sample mean of 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. So that's to the left of the mean, and we're looking at 98.2. And so what we're looking for is the area, so we're going to shade everything to the left here. Okay, so now keep in mind that the value of x represents the temperature. So this is x, which represents the temperature. And so now we want to now take a look at the z scale. And then what do we know about the z-scale? Well, with the z-scale, we know that the mean is always going to be zero because it's the standard normal distribution. And what we're looking for is we want to find out what is this z-score and then determine what the area is. So we've drawn the bell curve and we've labeled what we need to label. And so in step two, we work under the assumption that the population of the human body temperatures has a mean of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. We weren't given the distribution of the population, but because the sample size n is equal to 106 exceeds 30, we use the central limit theorem and conclude that the distribution of sample means is a normal distribution with these parameters. So with x equal 98.2, we know that mu, which is the mean, uh, is 98.6. We have our standard deviation of 0 0.62 and n is equal to 106. So we're going to go ahead and use our formula where z is equal to x, the value, data value, minus the mean over the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Let's go ahead and put in this information into our calculator. So we take 98.2 and then we're going to subtract 98.6 and that's what we get for the numerator is negative 0.4. And then we're going to divide that, we're going to put this in parentheses because we have a fraction and denominator, 0 0.62, and then we're going to divide that by the square root of n, which is 106, and then we're going to close the parentheses, and that gives us negative 6.642, and so if we round that to two decimal places, then we get negative 6.64. So therefore, this z-score, negative 6.64, is representative of the value of 98.2. So now what we're going to do is we want to be able to find the area to the left using StatCrunch. So we're going to go ahead and then click on StatCrunch. So we're going to click Stat at the top of the menu, go to Calculators, and then scroll all the way down to Normal. Now again, in the calculator box, you want to make sure that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 since we're inputting a z-score. We want to make sure that we're looking for the left, so we want to make sure that this inequality is pointing to the left. And then we're going to put in the z-score of negative 6.64. And then we're going to select Compute. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to copy this. OK. 
Okay, so you can see what we get for our area. In our area, it's given us a value of 1.5684 times, and that's 10, that's e to the negative 11. So that means we need to move that over this decimal over 11 times. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is where our decimal is. So we have 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that gives us 0 0.0000 actually if we rounded it to four decimal places. So Referring to stack crunch, we find that z is equal to negative 6.64, which gives us an area of 1.5684e to the negative 11, which is the same as 1.5684 times 10 to the negative 11th, which gives us the following result. In rounding it to four decimal places, we would conclude that the shaded region is 0, 0.000. So this, therefore, is now 0, 0.0000. Now, it may be a little bit different if you're using the table because the table goes off the chart for this z-score. So technically it's still 0, 0.000. Now the interpretation. The results show that if the mean of our body temperatures is really 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, as we assumed, then there is an extremely small probability of getting a sample mean of 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit or lower when 106 subjects are randomly selected. University of Maryland researchers did obtain such a sample, a sample mean, and after confirming that the sample mean is sound, there are two feasible explanations. Number one, the population mean really is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and their sample represents a chance event that is extremely rare. And number two, the population mean is actually lower than the assumed value of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and so their sample is typical. Because the probability is low, or so low, it is, it is more reasonable to conclude that the population mean is lower than 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So in reality, it appears that the true mean body temperature is closer to 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the last part of this section is the following. Correction for a finite population. When sampling without replacement and the sample size n is greater than 5% of the finite population of size capital N, that is, uh, the sample size n is greater than 5% of the population, we adjust the standard deviation of sample means by multiplying it by this finite population correction error, uh, factor. So it would be the square root of uh, the population n minus the sample size of n divided by the population n minus 1. 